Welcome to this tech tip provided by Imaginet Technologies. My name is Rusty Belcher and I'll be going through the tech tip with you today. In today's example we're going to be taking a look at how we can build this particular bench that you see on the screen. Now I saw this bench in a YouTube video uh, from one of my favorite YouTube authors. His name is Jimmy DeResta and uh, if you haven't looked at Jimmy DeResta's stuff on YouTube you really owe yourself uh, the chance to go in and, and certainly check his videos out and subscribe to him. He's just an amazing craftsman and I really did like the bench that he built in this video and I thought that this bench was a perfect example to use with Inventor and the content center and the frame generator. Now I will put a link in the description of this video to Jimmy's video that I based this demonstration on. Now I'm going to close this. I want to start basically from scratch with this design. I've already done a little bit of work. I've built the skeleton of the bench that I want to create. And I want to take just a few minutes and go through how I put this skeleton together. So I'm going to use the end of part up here. And basically I started off by generating an offset work plane. Let me turn on the, uh, the ground plane for you here just so you can see that. So the large plane represents the ground and uh, if I double click this plane you'll see that it's 16 inches offset uh, from the original or from the original plane. So that represents the top at the front of the seat of the bench. Now the next thing I did is I drew a 48 inch line which represents the width of the seat of this particular bench. Now then I added another work plane. So I'm going to go to the side view so that you can see this work plane actually has a down angle. I actually angled it five degrees. I drew my first real sketch which is the frame of the seat and then I created another work plane. Again I'll turn the visibility on of that and I want you to see that this is also an angular work plane. I angled this again another five degrees off of the original seat. I drew my second sketch which is the back of the bench and there's a little uh, 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 interior member here. Uh, we've got the back edges of the bench right there. Created a work plane at the end of the design and I sketched the, uh, the armrest and the upright and the back leg. I sketched on that plane. I then created a work plane at the other end and I projected those lines down to the opposite end of the bench. Now these are the lines that I need in order to create the bench inside of Inventor using the frame generator. Now I'm going to close this. I call this, by the way, I call this my bench skeleton. This is the, uh, basically a, uh, an example of skeletal design using Autodesk Inventor. Now uh, I'm going to start a new assembly. So we're going to go in and just do a simple assembly at this point. And the very first part that I'm going to place into my design is the bench skeleton. I'm just going to place it at its original coordinates. And you need to save the file to get started. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to save this as sample bench. Now the first thing I want to do is get started on the metal frame. And in Inventor we have a great tool called the frame generator. So I can come in and I can use this insert frame command. This is the command we all refer to as the frame generator. When you start this, you have a dialog that prompts you to, to select a size of material. So I'm going to stick with the ANSI standard here. I'm going to come down and grab some square tube. And now for this example, I'm going to use 2 by 2 by 1 8 of an inch. In uh, Jimmy DeResta's video, he uses 2 by 2 by 1 16th. Uh, that size is not available in the ANSI standard. I could make that size. There is a way to go in and author your own profile. But for this example, 2x2x8 two by two by will work just fine. Now, all we have to do to model the bench is select some geometry. I'm going to use the Select Edge method. You can see that I can come in and select the four members that make up the seat. And they pop in, it, really, in the correct orientation. And that's a little bit of luck here. We actually have uh, what I call the molded line option or the orientation option up here. You know, For instance, if I select it right in the middle, then those lines would go right through the middle of that steel shape. 
But if you needed to offset it, you know, what does that line represent? Does it represent the inside or outside of the piece? You can adjust the orientation. So we'll click the, the correct orientation. I'll, click, I'll pick OK. All the pieces are named automatically, so each component gets its own name. I'll click OK, and Inventor will generate those four square tubes. Now in the original design, we, they use mitered corners. So let's go ahead and use the miter option with Frame Generator. I simply have to pick the two members, click Apply, and we can come in and miter the corners. So there is the, uh, the seat frame of our bench. Now I'm going to start the frame generator again, and this time I want to get the uprights. Now, quite often, uh, you will see that if you, if you try to select multiple lines, uh, you can't. You have to, in, in many cases, you have to add the members one at a time because of the orientation. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of these one at a time. Uh, I can see my orientation here. That's not right. It must be that one. And I can, I can orbit it around and see that that's the correct orientation. I'll pick Apply. We'll go over to this side. Pick the alternate orientation. There we go. Do the cross member at the top. And this cross member here. Just like before, I want to come up and miter the corners. Now, to trim off the members here, I'm going to use the Trim and Extend command. This allows me to select a member and then select a face to trim to. So if I click Apply, you see that this member is cut back to this face. So we'll go to the other end of the cross member. We'll select this face. Click OK. Now, we can use the Trim and Extend command on multiple members. So I can pick both of the end pieces here. And in this case, I want to trim to the top face. And let me get in here real close so you can actually see this happen. And I click OK. The member is trimmed and extended at the same time. So it matches perfectly. All right, the next thing I need to do is the armrests. Now, the armrests are made out of square rectangular, I'm sorry, rectangular tube. Now, again, with the sizes available here, uh, I'm going to stick with the uh, 4 by 2 by 1 8 size. If you are entertaining the idea of building this bench yourself, of course, if you use different sizes, your bench would be a little bit different design. I'm just sticking with the sizes and the shapes that are available out of the box with Inventor. And actually, 4 by 2 by, a, um, by an eighth, I'm sorry, 4 by 2 by an eighth is what I want to use. So I'm going to select this edge right here. Now, just in case it ever happens to you, um, if the bar comes in at a di not just uh, a different orientation, but a different rotation angle, you can modify the rotation angle here. So I'm going to select 90, and I think that is actually the correct orientation. We'll go to the opposite end. This time we'll flip it, let's see, right there. I'll pick OK. Now with these two bars, again with the Trim and Extend command, uh, I can come in and I can trim these to the back face. And again, let me, let me uh, just zoom in so that you can see this occur automatically so we can trim it right off at the back edge of the design. We'll go back to our 2x2 two two square tube. Uh, the correct orientation.
So now I've got all the structural members, or at least the uh, rectangular and square tube members in place. Now let's finish off by trimming these up. I'm going to trim these first two to the underside of the armrest. The back two, I need to trim these a couple of times. I'm going to trim them first here. Again, let me zoom in and let you see that. And then the bottom with this face right here. So these two members also are going to get trimmed to this flat face right here. So now we've got a, the nice uh, ends at the end of those so the bench should sit uh, level on the ground. Now the thing I really like about the frame generator is that all of these parts are related to that original skeleton. So if I were to ever you know, go in and modify the skeleton, for instance the length of the bench, I could change the 48 to 60. I'll click OK. Uh, I'll click return and that change will be propagated through the entire design. So you see that all the parts update and they keep their uh, mitered corners, all the trims update uh, the way they're supposed to. Now I'm going to go back and change that back to 48 for this example. There we go. Now I need to create some flat bars that are going to mount the wooden back and the wooden seat in position. And I want these flat bars to stretch to suit as well. So I'm going to model these from scratch using the adaptive workflow that's available inside of Inventor. So I'm going to create a new part file. Uh, just going to go ahead and sketch on the XY plane. And if you're going to use adaptivity, here's a tip. You really want to anchor one of the corners of your design at zero. Makes things work a lot easier. So I'm going to just, uh, this is a one by quarter flat bar. So there's my one inch dimension. And you'll notice that as I add this, the geometry changes color. The constrained geometry is a different color than the free geometry. Now, this is the basis of what we call the adaptive workflow. Uh, if you have never used adaptivity with Inventor before, it simply means that the part can stretch to suit. Uh, it's very easy for me to come in and drag this edge because it's free. And I want to take advantage of that freedom in this particular design. I'm going to extrude this shape, and I am not going to plug in the correct length. I know it's 44 inches, but that's not the point here. Um, I'm going to put in 0.25 here, and we'll click OK. Now to make this part adaptive, we simply right click on the extrusion and we select adaptive from the pop-up menu. This makes the part and the sketch adaptive, which means that they can stretch to suit. Now I'm going to save this as my flat bar. Just overwrite my existing one. and I'll close that out. Now back in my assembly, I'm going to place that flat bar component. I'll drop it off and I'll go ahead and start to constrain it in place. Uh, the constraints are just my location rules that allow me to build this bench uh, piece by piece, so I can apply that there. We'll put another mate constraint at the end, and I'll put a flush constraint here and here. And we'll put an offset of 0.75. Now, right now the part's in place. I can come down and right click on the part in the browser and select adaptivity. Now that's off the screen, but now the part's adaptive. So what does that mean? Well, if I keep constraining now, add another mate to the opposite end, I can come down and that part will lengthen to suit. Very nice. It, now that part's going to act like all the other members in the frame. Uh, as the bench gets longer or shorter, that part will adapt to suit. Now I need uh, three more of these, so bear with me. I'm going to simply go over here and drag another one from the browser, place it into my design. Again, I'm going to use those constraints to locate it in position. I'm simply going to repeat that two more times.
So now I've got my flat bar in position. Now just to finish up my adaptive example, I'm going to go back in and modify the length of the skeleton again. I'm going to set it back to 60 inches. When I click return, you'll notice that all the members, the frame members as well as the flat bar members that I modeled from scratch actually stretch to suit. I'll go ahead and put it back to 48 inches and move on. Now for the remainder of this example, I actually don't need to see the skeleton. I'm simply going to go to the browser, take the visibility off of that, and here we have the steel frame for our design. Now we need to drill some holes in that flat bar. So in the assembly, all I have to do to edit the part is simply double click it. I'm going to sketch on the front of the flat bar, and I'm going to come in and add a point. Drawing inside of Inventor is extremely easy. Uh, I put a point in place and I need this point to be horizontally aligned to the center of the flat bar. Very simple to do with the 2D constraints. Now I happen to know these dimensions. I've built this thing before. So uh, this first hole, 1.75 inches off the end. And I need to, uh, to drill the hole. I'll simply finish the sketch and start the hole command. I've got it set up to uh, drill a hole. We're drilling a quarter inch hole all the, way th all the way through the bar. We'll click OK there. And then I'm going to pattern that hole along the edge of the part. Now I need uh, 13 occurrences of this hole. And 3.375 is the distance between each hole. Again, I've built this before. I know those particular dimensions for this design. Now, when I click Return, I want you to notice that the holes appear in all instances of that flat bar plate. I also want to add the wooden boards in place. Now, I already have modeled those, so I'm simply going to go out and place them. Uh, here's the seat board, and here is the back board. I can pick both parts and bring them both in at the same time. And again, I'll use those constraints to place these in position. When I add this constraint here, I need to put in an offset of 0.125. So there's a little gap there. Select Apply. And then this one is going to match right up against that one. There we go. the same offset gap right there as we did in the upper one. Now there's a very nice little workflow that is available if you have used a pattern in a part. You can actually pattern based on another pattern. So I'm going to use the pattern command at the assembly level. I'm going to select my two uh, pieces of wood and then we're going to associate this pattern with the pattern of holes we drilled earlier. So there you're going to see all the boards in the seat and on the back of the component. Anytime you can use a pattern inside of Inventor, you really want to take the, the opportunity to do so. Now, I also need to add a fastener and uh, to secure the, the board to the flat bar. Now, to do that, I'm going to place from my Content Center. Content Center is a, a big library of parts that is uh, available uh, that we can use whenever we need it. There's almost two million parts uh, that come along with Inventor and we can use. I'm going to use this, um, this uh, fastener screw here. Uh, I'm going to bring this in and you'll notice that as I bring it in I, it'll actually resize itself to the hole that I select. And then I can change the length of this. If I just hover on the end of it you can see that I can change the length to the next available length, either shorter or longer. So I'm going to go with about three quarters of an inch here. And then I love this feature. The idea here is that I can insert multiple instances based on the pattern of the selected part. So if I click Apply, I'll get fasteners all up and down that pattern. I can just come over here, do the same thing. And we'll 
put it under the bench as well. So very quickly we've got all of our screws in place that are going to secure the boards to the metal frame. Now that we've got the bench built, it's time to do our drawings. So let's go to File New and I want to build a standard uh, DWG drawing of this design. I'm going to start off with a base view of the front of the part. We'll go ahead and project the top, side, and even the isometric view. I'll click OK and those views are going to be drawn for me automatically. Of course I can come in and edit the view if I want to shade it. It's very easy to do. Now on the drawing I can absolutely come in and add all of the necessary annotations. Now for this example I'm only going to add a few but I can come in and easily get the length over all of the bench uh, maybe the height or maybe the distance between these two uh, interior edges. There's that 44 uh, inch dimension. Uh, I can also add some angular dimensions. Uh, if, you have, if you have to cut these bars, you can imagine that you certainly would want to know the different angles uh, as they are added here. So very nice that I can do that. Now at this point, I notice I make a mistake. So I'm looking down here and I actually, one of these bars was placed in the wrong orientation. And uh, hey, mistakes happen. It's a part of any designer's life. So let's go back in and fix that issue. Uh, I've had situations that happen before where, you know, I make a mistake and it's almost easier to start from scratch again. And this is Inventor. That's really not the case. So I can come back over here to the frame generator and I need to modify a, a member. So I'm going to use the uh, change frame members. I'm going to select this bar and I want to modify its orientation. I'm going to check and see which one it is. I think that was the correct one right there. I'll click OK and that looks like it fixes the design. I'll go ahead and save that. and Let's go back over to our drawing you'll notice that our drawing is going to update automatically. Now that change is reflected correctly in our drawing. Now I also want to add a bill of material to this design. So uh, on the annotate tab, we'll come over here with the parts list, we'll go ahead and select the view, we'll drop off our parts list right up here. This is one of the uh, additional benefits of the frame generator is that it gives me all of the correct cut links from all the components in our design. Now right now, quantity is the rolled up length of each member. So uh, let me make this, uh, I think, a little bit clearer for me and hopefully for you as well. Uh, I'm going to come in and add another value here. I'm going to add the item quantity. Uh, so I'm going to come down here for the item quantity. We'll add that here. That would be the number of item 1's, the number of item 2's, the number of item 3's, and so on. So I'm going to move this up above quantity. I'll click OK. So now I have my item quantity. We'll, uh, we'll right click and just format that column. I want it to be center justified. And then for this quantity, I count that as the length quantity. So I'm going to format that and we'll just call that uh, total length. I'll click OK. And of course I can adjust my parts list so that things look nice and even on the screen. So now I have, you know, for item one, I have two item ones. Both of them together are a total of 32 inches. And the links are from the long points of the steel shapes. And they do reflect the trims and the extends that we added to the design. I can come over here with the balloon tool and I can very quickly come in and uh, add the balloons to the design. So there's item two. Item 2 lines up with here. I've got uh, a total of three of those and the entire length of all of them together is 144 inches. Each of them is 48 inches in length. We'll go ahead and add some additional balloons. 
I'm adding my balloons one at a time. There is an auto balloon feature, but usually I end up liking the placement that I use uh, myself. Alright, so there they all are. So we're about 24 minutes into this video and we've completed the model of the bench and the beginning of our drawing. Now I've got one more thing I need to do to this particular bench. I need to make sure I sign it with uh, Jimmy DeResta's logo. So bear with me for just a minute. We're going to just place another component. We'll go ahead and bring in the stencil. and we'll place that on the bench. Of course, if I check my drawing, you'll see that that's automatically been added to the drawing, and it even appears in the bill of material if we want it to. Now, again, about 24 minutes into the design, we've got the drawing basically done. Uh, the model done. I, I went ahead in this example and finished up a uh, highly detailed drawing. I added exploded views of the bench. I added uh, just the, the front views, some more dimensions on the end of the bench. I added some additional sheets that show the back uh, in a true form. So the same thing with the seat. Uh, certainly generated section views and detail views with all of the parts outlined. I even have a sheet that has all the cuts for all the components, the boards, the flat bar, and all the steel members. Now, I took the opportunity to upload all of these designs to GrabCAD. Uh, I love GrabCAD. GrabCAD is the place I go to share my content with anybody. Uh, it really uh, doesn't matter what CAD tool you use. You're more than welcome to come up and to join the GrabCAD community and start uh, contributing and downloading uh, from their extensive library of 3D models. But uh, here's the uh, Jimmy DeResta bench. If I go ahead and click that, you can see uh, I've got a couple of renders up here of it. I also have the model. There's a 3D viewer if you'd like to go up and take a look at this. I'll include the link to this uh, GrabCAD position uh, in the uh, description of this video as well. But that's going to conclude this example of using Inventor, the frame generator, and the content center to design a bench. Again, if you haven't looked at any of Jimmy DeResta's videos on YouTube, I really would encourage you to do so. He's one of my favorite authors on YouTube and uh, really would encourage you to subscribe to his channel. Thank you and I hope you guys have a great day.